cheese. No, it's okay. It's okay. I'm happy only. Asha, have you admitted everybody? Yes, sir. They have logged. Okay. I think it's okay. Sit now. Shiva, uh, which year you are doing, boss? Sir, I am now finally a PG, sir. You want to see, no? Yes, sir. From Anthony, sir. You need, sir. Oh, sorry. Uh, from Sir Anthony, kind of. Yes, sir. He has joined uh, now. Uh, okay, okay. Don't check it. Yeah, he will tune in. He is a professional guy. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> We'll wait for five minutes, uh, Harsha. Professor Anthony? Professor Anthony? No, no, he's tuned in. So we have Professor Anthony. Hi, Anton. How are you? Hi, Raki Bai. Why is he coming out here? Pude. What the Romana love this Madri? What is this? When did you When did you started uh, doing Pan India movies, man? <laughs> But your uh, your uh, the Indian name is very nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well i think uh, shall we start uh, professor anto yes 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 we'll start okay so 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 <laughs> go okay good evening everybody and uh, it's a very very important uh, evening for you all today uh, actually i want to uh, start this uh, series with a few uh, words of advice number one is uh, um Uh, you see, uh, many many people are uh, practicing ENT. Uh, many many people are practicing uh, good, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, good ENT. But uh, there are very few who really want to impart knowledge. And uh, I think there are very few teachers who really want to, uh, you know, propagate knowledge. And in that um, in that row, I keep Professor Anthony, uh, uh, you know, on the top. Uh, the reason being actually uh, you see every year we do grand rounds and this year actually uh, professor anthony rang up to me and said hey what happened to your grand rounds uh, which is actually uh, telling how much of uh, you know uh, involvement uh, professor anthony has got in teaching students and uh, this is something very unique 
Uh, in fact, I also wanted to do it actually, and uh, if I do it, I'll do it only with him. He's he's called the Encyclopedia of ENT. I have great respect for him. Apart from he being my classmate, uh, a very very knowledgeable uh, personality in this field. Uh, and uh, honestly, when I have a doubt, I immediately phone up and ask him. And uh, he he will not refer any textbook. Just like that, he will give the answer. Uh, uh, spontaneous uh, answers I have got from him. fantastic surgeon you should see his uh, surgery as well um so but today uh what is this grand rounds about so for people who have just joined first year ms post graduates see this is something like a mock exam uh, so professor antony will be interviewing one of his uh, post graduates i thank his post graduate dr shiva who is doing a, his third year uh, ms in madras medical college in professor antony's unit and you know one thing uh, everybody wants to go to his unit because he's so academic i'm so proud to say that i'm his classmate i'm proud to say that uh, i'm one of his students so uh, without much ado uh, i think i will hand over the dais to um, professor antony one thing i want to tell you is that i have done many grand rounds and uh, some people actually what will happen is that they will tell the answers before and it look like a, a sort of a uh, pre prepared uh, question answer session but here you will see the real uh, uh, you know uh, exam type of uh, uh, you know environment all of you take your notebooks take your pen and start jogging down his points these are the questions which will be asked for you yeah, we'll in a viva so here we are we start right now okay over to you professor antony thank you janigram you know uh, thanks for your kind words but uh, whatever kind words i tell uh, that is not uh, uh, what do you say uh, uh, warranted because you are a, a pan world star and uh, throughout the world they they know you and uh, you are caliber i am so proud to say that i am your classmate and i know you right so knowing janigram itself is a big thing uh, so somebody comes and uh, comes and talks ent to me and they try to boss then i tell listen i am jani ram's classmate and friend uh, that will solve most of the problem so thank you for being our friend and uh, metro medical college is very proud of you i should say that once this all this uh, covid uh, and other things are all over uh, i'll expect you to come back to metro medical college to do your uh, uh build your magic van and show your uh, prowess to uh, the, the next generation as i know you are so much interested in uh, teaching people you are a uh, uh, what do you say you are a uh, inborn metabolic errored teacher so it there in your gene that the little chronic teacher so <laughs> uh, <laughs> when when somebody asks you to take a graph somebody asks you to take a graph you will tell 1 2 3 4 5 and i find it when i come to royal pearl to relax and do some surgeries uh, any any one uh, who's a resident at that time they'll come and ask sir are you doing that third step don't you do that the fourth step don't you do this uh, this step and things like that no with you name everything i still remember from your uh, elephant ear the uh, uh, jula jula techniques so uh, i'm so happy that uh, you are such a uh, enthusiastic teacher and with this uh, we'll go into the, the the grand rounds i'll introduce you Shiva Subramaniam to you he is the uh, my uh, right hand left hand and uh, everything because uh, in Madras Medical College we have thirty post graduates uh, per year so of which five to six post graduates will be in every unit unfortunately this this batch uh, we had about twenty five girls so only oh, yeah. five boys are there so oh, yeah. he is the only boy <laughs> he is the only boy in my in my unit and uh, he used to run for everything from arranging conferences <laughs> arranging food and uh, fighting with uh, with anesthetist anything you tell him he is the man so with this uh, he was so helpful to me in running my my ward uh, with all the uh, 
uh, lady pg is around uh, so uh, and uh, <laughs> let's see how he is presenting his case today and please bear with him he is not like uh, sara who was presented last year uh, uh, in the sense that uh, uh, because he was overworked uh, and we have not rigorous we'll see how he is doing today uh, hope he is uh, more tense than uh, shiva doc shiva yes sir good evening I, i just messaged dr anthony if i were your student i'll be definitely failing only <laughs> so shiva will definitely pass and because he has been taught by you so whatever you say no will be better than my answer only go ahead and uh, freak out boss i really uh, first of all congratulate you because you see it's very uh, uh, bold of you to come in front of the audience like this because this is going to be watched throughout the world believe me this this uh, is such a sort of program and the whole world is going to watch and you are going to be uh, of course uh, the uh, kadha nayagar and the director is there sitting there with this uh, charming face okay over to you thank you sir thank you yes shiva we are waiting yes sir A 50-year-old female, Mrs. X, a daily wage laborer hailing from Adyar, came with the chief complaints of left ear discharge and the for the past three years, and left ear hard of hearing for the uh, past two one year. History of presenting illness. Patient was apparently going, normal before going yes. going before this uh, present illness. What are all the what are all you consider as the chief complaints of ear diseases? So ear discharge, ear pain, hard of hearing, tinnitus, and vertigo. these are all the five important main complaints okay of which uh, uh, the order might put uh, order fearing next to ear discharge so why you want to know about order fearing why you want to know about ear discharge what is chronic suppurative otitis media so it's a chronic uh, suppurative inflammation of the mucoperiosteal lining of middle ear cleft so i am asking these these questions for the sake of first years uh every definition is taken as a definition and uh, you got to come out with the exact words right there are two three definitions for csom the commonest definition is the chronic suppurative otitis media is the chronic suppurative inflammation of the mucoperiosteal lining of the middle ear cleft middle ear cleft includes eustachian tube uh middle ear cavity and the mastoid aerial system so uh the uh, who definition of csom is uh, intermittent or continuous otorrhea through a permanent non intact tympanic membrane for more than 3 months. months duration so to say a patient who is suffering from csom you should have two important things one is present or past history of ear discharge okay second one is uh perforated a perforated drum so these two things are all important to say this patient has got a csom if the uh, uh, then the second thing is the patient is present with the ear discharge we call it as an active disease if the patient has got no ear discharge for more than 6 years 6 months you call it as an inactive disease inactive. in between is called a quiescent disease and yes. basically csom is got a squamous type or a uh, mucosal type before presenting a case uh, uh, you should go into an idea of knowing whether it is a squamous type or a mucosal type because a squamous type is known to produce lot of complications so uh, and it's not that mucosal type will not produce complications but the chances for complication in the mucosal type is very very less to keep this in in the mind we will go to the presenting uh illness which will give you uh, an idea about the what type of csom we are dealing with. okay yes history of presenting illness patient was apparently normal before 3 years then she developed the left ear discharge which was insidious in onset intermittent which is thick scanty and creamy it is associated with occasional blood stains and foul smell not associated with ear pain or headache uh, aggravated by head bath and relieved with um, uh, topical medications ear drops left uh siva you should tell the color of the discharge yes it's a greenish uh... yeah so the characteristics amount color consistency blood stain foul smelling will decide what type of discharge it is 
so basically your discharge can be a uh, non infective or infective discharge for example csf arteria is a discharge uh, is a uh, uh, fluid coming out of the ear which is not because of infection but uh, the the ear discharge can be serous mucoid or purulent so uh, serous discharge usually comes from the early disease or a late disease or allergic disease or an external canal disease but when you are doing a csom it may be a mucopurulent or a purulent discharge mucopurulent discharge characteristic feature of a uh, tube body panic and a purulent discharge is characteristic of an anticoagulant disease so how do you differentiate these two discharge by their characters sir uh, purulent discharge will be scanty in amount it, 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 yes. it will be thick greenish uh, in color greenish in color uh, sometimes it will be uh, associated with blood stains and foul smell so amount color consistency blood stain and foul smelling it is uh, amount is scanty color is greenish uh, consistency is thick creamy uh, foul smelling sometimes blood stain sometimes so this is mucopurulent discharge okay purulent. purulent discharge will be uh, sorry this is the purulent discharge mucopurulent discharge will be copious or large amount then uh, copious or profuse it is uh, yellowish in color or um, uh, whitish to greenish yellow in color sticky because it is mucoid it will be sticky it will be not foul smelling not blood stain okay right uh, then out of hearing patient had uh, left ear hard of hearing which was uh, for about one year and it is also in incident onset slowly progressive uh, she is not able to hear the whisper sounds on that uh, left ear uh, she is also able to hear the normal conversations on uh, with the left ear is it common for a patients to identify an hearing loss particularly one year duration on only one year uh, sir actually uh, she so told that uh, she is not able to uh, speak phone with the left ear uh, that's why uh, out of hearing so before the advent of these phones so much uh, cell phones the hearing loss will be uh, uh, hearing loss due to i mean hearing loss on one side alone will be found out when the patient sits on that side and talk or whenever the sound comes from the behind they will not be able to localize the sound but after the advent of these cell phones uh, we always use on both ears and we can compare which ear is you are hearing better and if there is a less amount of hearing you can find out okay then no history of ear pain no history of headache no history ear of pain and what it is if the patient has got pain what is it mean this patient complains of deep uh, boring pain in the ear any impending complications of Mastitis, uh, otitis mastitis. externa. Otitis externa may not be the associated otitis. Now you can't call it as a complication. So okay. first is uh, because of constant clearing, patient can develop otitis externa. How will you diagnose otitis externa? How will you sir, diagnose uh, otitis with externa? With the endoscope, sir. Uh, otoscopic some finding. Sign, uh, some sign. Some sign. Tragal sign. Tragal tenderness. Tragal sign. so tragal tenderness or moving the ear or opening the mouth will have pain if the patient doesn't tell this pain and then patient is complaining of deep boring pain what are all the complication can produce pain in the ear uh, sir only you said mastitis then subperiosteal abscess subperiosteal abscess then petrositis apex petrositis yes okay. intracranial complications Trump. like thrombophibitis lateral sinus thrombophibitis lateral sinus thrombosis usually don't produce pain very rarely produces pain whenever there is a peri sinus abscess uh, it, it, the pain is because of extradural abscess pain is because of uh, meningitis pain is because of uh, dull aching pain whenever there is a expanding uh, brain abscess all these conditions produces pain so when the cso patient complains of pain you should be careful okay you should be careful okay Right. Then, no history of tinnitus and vertigo. No history of fever. No history. If, of if the patient has got tinnitus and vertigo, what does that indicate? Sir, uh, tinnitus can be due to any cause from the external ear to the inner ear. Okay. Can be due to accumulation of discharge 
or wax uh, in, in discharge in the middle ear ossicular disruption or ossicular fixity uh, associated mass as, uh, csom with a hearing loss can cause changes but usually when the patients get stenitis and associated uh, uh, vertigo with or without vertigo you should think of sir if the patient develops stenitis with or without vertigo in a csom patient anticoagulant disease you should think of discharging the active disease very rare it produces lot of discharge no yes. anticoagulant disease usually it because of an inner ear involvement okay patient is going for mixed hearing loss okay then uh, the patient what is the cause for if your patient develops vertigo what do you think of inner ear involvement sir labyrinthitis labyrinthine fistula labyrinthine fistula okay then inner ear involvement okay like labyrinthitis right proceed no history of nausea and vomiting no history of neck pain or stiffness no history of double vision no uh, significant nasal and throat complaints you told about all the intracranial complications but you have left out uh, uh, facial pulsy sir there was no okay. history of facial facial asymmetry not able to open the mouth not able to do that to the drinking all these things you should know next past history and uh, patient was not a diabetic not a hypertensive uh, no history of tuberculosis epilepsy thyroid disease no history of previous ent surgery and uh, no history of similar illness in the past family history uh, no significance uh, personal history person uh, patient consumes mixed diet normal sleep and pattern uh, sleep pattern and appetite uh, normal blood level and bladder habit no other habitual history family history what is the significant family history for csi sir uh, socio economic uh, status uh, status uh, what socio economic status it is common sir in poor socio economic status uh, oh, csom is a disease of the poor socio economic status right so patient uh, you should have a socio economic status the overcrowding causes cross repeated reinfections then a patient who lives in a house which is not well ventilated or not well uh, lit the light is very low these conditions will augment the upper respiratory tract infection often which may cause the eustachian tube dysfunction and the chances for um, chronic subclavian and otic media are more high okay right then next next present yes sir. general examination no. patient was moderately once you, once once you finish no wait wait once you finish your uh, clinical examination i mean uh, once you finish the history you should be in a position to tell you tell us is there a lesion if there is a lesion where is the lesion and what is the lesion okay so tell me is there a lesion yes where is the lesion a... what is the lesion what do you think you are dealing with and there is a chronic inflammation of uh, middle ear okay why do you say that yeah because of the duration it's for about 3 years and uh, that is there is whether was intermittent discharge from the middle ear and uh, the characteristic of discharge is uh, similar to that of anticoagulant disease okay so this make you think that the patient has got a middle ear problem probably infection so long standing infection maybe it is a anticoagulant disease right okay right. next uh go to examination right general examination patient was moderately built and nourished patient was conscious oriented to time place and person there was no pyral uh, pallary stenosis clubbing generalized lymphadenopathy or pyral edema patient's vitals was stable uh, don't use this mnemonic in the exam it's okay you, you use it today to hear but don't generally use mnemonics right then they will ask what is tickle what is sickle what is uh, what is nickel tell me one disease which is caused by nickel over exposure tell me one disease occurs because of taking lot of pickle and what is associated with sickle so this happens to i think janikram knows this happens to one of the very very studious uh, my senior who present when he was presenting on external nose 
he said nasian instead of telling the direction was appears normal he said nasian then they started asking what is enian what is tidian what is is uh, keep on asking no yeah. he knows he knows he can do that course he can do the case well and suddenly they have they have diverted and because of what he told and then he got scared he fainted so examiners uh, few examiners few two of the examiners start we can can give him a break but one examiner says no they arose this ascending reticular activating system made him sit down again and i started asking questions thanniya telichu adipanga thanniya telichu enchu ukkara vechi thirupi question keta keta when you are i remember very well i remember very well we are all in the uh, uh, examination all day so it happens so don't use this this word so the thing is the knack of taking examination is take you in such a way that you take the examiner in the path what you like him to take you and uh, you act as if he is taking you but actually you should do, you should lead him in the path okay right then ear examination uh, pre auricular area pinna post auricular area was normal on the left side in eac there were minimal uh, greenish discharge present in wait, the wait wait wait, wait, wait. Uh, see this is not case presentation basically it's a general rounds uh, uh, the grand rounds means pre auricular region what are all things we will look for sir any sinus pre auricular tax pre auricular swellings tag. swelling what, what, what's the what's the importance of tax sir can any other congenital anomalies can uh, we hospital anomalies or patient can have a facial nerve anomalies a patient can have other anomalies okay so you got to be careful when you are operating on a patient then you look for nodes pre auricular nodes okay what do you look in the pinna sir size of the pinna okay any uh, congenital anomalies like low pier or uh, then what else what is pseudo cyst in post auricular region uh, what sir? is pseudo cyst of pinna uh, boxes here uh, the collection of blood between the peri- pericondylar layer and the cartilage of the not blood it's a serous fluid it's yeah, called serous. seroma okay the serous fluid accumulates between the pericondrium and the cartilage and lifting it if it gets infected it can cause pericondritis can cause eating away of the uh, uh, cartilage can produce shriveled ear okay then what do you look at the post auricular area <clears throat> post auricular groove for oh, any swelling in the post auricular region post auricular groove should be looked for uh, depth and uh, why did you talk about post auricular groove then i will ask you what's the difference between a uh, acute pharyngosis and the mastoiditis sir in pharyngosis the post auricular groove will be uh, the, uh, deeper and in uh, acute mastoiditis it will be shallow will be accentuated and it will be obliterated and what are all the other differences sir so, pharyngosis uh, there will be tragal sign positive in acute mastoiditis uh, mass tenderness will be present over the symphacontica not in the tragus uh, posterior wall sagging will be there in acute mastoiditis posterior canal wall sagging pinna the pinna will be pushed uh, downwards and laterally in the acute mastoiditis downwards and uh, mm-hmm. backwards in uh, is not pushed closes. downwards in pharyngosis it is pushed outwards, outwards and laterally that uh, in a case of a the pharyngosis is pushed outwards in a case of mastoiditis is pushed downwards and outwards okay then what about the hearing loss is that sir uh, in pharyngosis i ask one question let us let yes. us ha huh? yeah what is, is frank sign uh, my dear shiva frank frank sign sir uh, frank bl- pus not frank plus a pus frank sign of the ear lobe of the ear lobe anything connected to the heart okay diagonal ear lobe uh, which actually is called the frank sign 
and that represent coronary artery disease okay i mean uh, this is indicator for coronary artery disease okay this was asked to me that's why i asked you okay boss carry on carry on. sorry 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 professor and before professor andre i should ask you should not ask any question bye okay post auricular region what are all the signs of mastitis in post auricular region with the mastitis Sir, tenderness over the simba okay you get mastitis tenderness then a swelling swelling then warm the tendon what is ironing out of mastitis area because of the periosteitis there will be thickening of the, the periosteum when you palpate the mastitis process all the bumps will get ironed out that's called ironing out sign okay then what is grissinger sign Sir, edema of the postural region. Pitting edema in the postural region. Post region. Okay, it's due to mastitis. Mastitis, we see the vein thrombosis. Okay, then uh, uh, what is battle sign? Sir, erythema. Uh, erythema over the post uh, post auricular area, sir. It will be uh, in trauma. not erythema it is bluish discoloration of the skin over the post mastitis post uh, auricular area is due to the uh, mass uh, trauma to the skull base whenever you have a road traffic accident the tearing of mastitis demiciri vein because of the fracture will produce bluish discoloration of the uh, post auricular area okay then Uh, so these are all the common things what you look for in the post auricular area then next lateral canal uh in left side the eac there was minimal dis uh, greenish discharge present in the roof of the roof and posterior uh, wall of the eac which was cleaned and uh, tympanic membrane was visualized uh, there was a perforation in that perforation in the attic region uh, with the granulation tissue in say uh, in said the attic and past tense looks appears a normal line, uh, and mobile you think this past tense is normal yes sir cone of light is uh, mildly distorted then okay. it is not Otherwise, glistening when it's not glistening it's not normal it looks retracted and then uh, uh, it's it's look this uh, distorted and the posterior part you can see a little bit of um, uh, thickening okay so you see a attic perforation with a granulation tissue inside the attic perforation do you see any cholestoma here or have we cleaned the cleaned the cholestoma no sir there were no no cholestoma in this uh, region sir It, the granulation okay. tissues were present inside the attic region so what uh, what is the how do you grade this attic sir retraction uh, toss yeah toss the uh, grade one is a dimpling a simple dimpling of the attic grade two retraction is draping uh, of is this sir grade 3 uh, grade 3 that means retraction. the partial erosion of the scutum uh, partial scutum erosion okay what are all the uh, uh, where does the retraction starts prusak space what are the boundaries of prusak space uh, laterally by pars placida medially in neck of the malleus superiorly uh, lateral malleus fanning fibers of the lateral malleolar fold inferiorly by the lateral process of malleus okay so that's prusak space right you take a small pin and puncture the pars placida where you enter is the prusak space medially by the neck of the malleus laterally by the pars placida superiorly by the fanning fibers of the lateral malleolar fold inferiorly by the lateral process of the malleus okay so uh, there the cholestoma starts okay then um, uh fine what are the other findings uh, 
ட்யூனிங் ஃபோர் டெஸ்ட் இன் ரினி ஆன் த லெஃப்ட் சைட் இட் வாஸ் பாசிட்டிவ் இன் சாரி நெகட்டிவ் இன் டூ ஃபிஃப்டி சிக்ஸ் ஹெட்ஸ் அண்ட் பாசிட்டிவ் இன் ஃபைவ் டுவெல் அண்ட் தௌசண்ட் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபோர் ஹெட்ஸ் வெபர் வாஸ் லேட்டலைஸ்ட் டு த லெஃப்ட் சைட் ஏர்போன் கண்டக்ஷன் நெகட்டிவ் இன் டூ ஃபிஃப்டி சிக்ஸ் ஹெட்ஸ் ஓன்லி சார் ஓகே Weber was lateralized to left side. So can you differentiate uh, the hearing loss as mild? The was not reduced in the left side. Can you, uh, yes. can you differentiate a mild, moderate, severe hearing loss with your uh, release test? Yes, sir. How? If, uh, only if uh, 256 is uh, negative and uh, both 512 and 1024 is positive, it, it can be a mild uh, connective hearing loss. Uh, if uh, 256 and 512 is negative and uh, 1024 is positive it can be moderate conductive hearing loss if th- all the three is uh, negative it can be uh, severe conductive hearing loss if the only weber is lateralized what is that uh, for weber to last la- lateralize there should be any conductive hearing loss uh, in the left side or uh, sensory neural hearing loss in the right side sir in the conductive hearing loss how much it should be Seven to ten decibels. Seven decibels. Uh, difference okay. Between two there should years. be difference of. There should be difference of seven decibels. If it is seven decibels, you get a beeper gets lateralized. Okay. You don't see five twelve two fifty six together. If it is two fifty six is uh, really negative, other two is really positive. It is mild. Then moderate and severe. Okay. uh what is false negative in sir in sensory neural hearing loss false negative in uh, unilateral uh, profound sensory neural hearing loss uh, uh if the uh, vibrating t- uh, tuning fork is kept over the mastoid it can be heard through the uh, normal ear but the air conduction is absent it is false what is what is the phenomenon is called Uh, it's called crossover phenomenon so bone conduction is first it's called crossover, crossover phenomenon bone conduction is uh, heard on both sides so when there is a severe sensory neural hearing loss so stick here on the on my right ear and when you keep the tuning fork here you will be hearing from the left side but uh, the, the bone conduction you cannot recognize whether it is left side or or right side so you will be hearing the sound so you will be telling that that's a in negative that will be differentiated by doing your weber test so what is abc absolute bone conduction test uh, we will be testing the bone conduction alone sir by uh, after closing that uh, es including the ec we will uh, you, uh, vibrate the tuning fork and place in the mastoid once the there patient is no, uh, there is no ec iec including external or external external after the external optic canal you assume the examiner is normal vibrate it tuning fork keep it over the patient mastoid process when the patient stops hearing it you can keep it on examiner here examiner here and to check it up and then you can uh, grade it or you can uh, um, quantify it by uh, calculating how many seconds the examiner can hear the examiner hears 5 seconds or examiner hears uh, hear 10 seconds Uh, the 10 seconds is severe compared with that of that 5 seconds okay you can quantify the uh, hearing loss by abc okay then what is three point tenderness no so uh, using three fingers uh, uh, sorry index uh, middle and uh, thumb finger middle finger will be kept over the simba conca index finger over the tip of sorry posterior border of the mastoid and uh, a thumb finger in the tip of the mastoid cell if tenderness is present in the simba conca it indicates uh, any mastoid it is uh, tenderness present over the posterior border of ma- mastoid uh, it indicates a mastoid ma- mastoid emissary vein thrombosis if tenderness is present in the tip uh, of the mastoid a tip cell infection can be there okay. so that's about the three point tenderness then what is fistula test how do you do fistula test sir so using uh, siegel's pneumatic speculum we will uh, vary it the what are the what is the um, 
सिविल नेमेटिक स्पेक्टलम कंटेंट्स तर यार ऑरल स्पेक्टलम मैग्नीफाइंग लेंस एंड नेमेटिक बल वॉट लेंस वॉट लेंस कॉन्केव लेंस सर कॉन्वेक्स लेंस सर बाई कॉन्वेक्स लेंस बाई कॉन्वेक्स व्हाट इज इस पावर टू एक्स मैग्नीफाइंग ये लेंस पावर्स क्वांटिफाइड इन डायरेक्टर्स How many diopters? Ten diopters. It gives you the two times magnification. Okay. What are the advantages of Siegel spectrum? Sir, uh, to check the mobility of the tympanic membrane, to do okay. fistula tests, okay. uh, to deliver medications for magnification. Okay. Um, powder insufflation tests uh, can be done through. Okay. Then. Okay, uh, suck out the uh, the secretion from the middle ear cavity. What is powder insufflation test? Sir, uh, it is hard to differentiate the type for uh, sorry other and other see what it is media and uh, perforation sometimes sir. And that time uh, we will use boric acid to insufflate the tympanic membrane. If the squamous epithelium is there, the boric acid won't get absorbed. If there is a inner ear mucosa. Sorry, don't ear, get wet. Wet. You don't get wet. Okay, if there is a middle ear mucus that is exposed, that secretes mucus. So whenever the boric powder is sprayed on a wet surface, it gets stuck and becomes wet. Okay, that's called powder insufflation test to differentiate between the grossly retracted tympanic membrane with that of the large central perforation. Okay, right. Then, by uh... on right uh, fistula test was negative in the right side three point tenderness was negative and the tracheal tenderness was negative in the left side uh, so fistula on... test what is fistula test what is the aim of the, the fistula test sir uh, to variate the pressure by difference in the middle ear and to check whether there is any fistula between uh, mid inner ear and the middle ear fistula track communication between inner and middle ear Find out the abnormal communication between the membrane that's labeled and the middle ear cavity, middle ear cleft. That is fistula test. How do you do fistula test? What are the methods of doing fistula test? Sir, uh, we can use pneumatic, sorry, or or uh, Siegel speculum to vary the pressure in the middle ear. We can alternatively close the tracheas and uh, open it. We can also use otoscope with pneumatic speculum, tightly fitting otoscope with pneumatic speculum, sir. Uh, If there is an oral the... polypore, do you get? Yes, sir. So, with pneumatic with the single pneumatic speculum, we will vary the pressure in the middle ear. Uh, when the patient still uh, develops vertigo, we we will uh, look for the nystagmus. If there is nystagmus, uh, the fistula test is positive, sir. How do you grade this? Grade this test? Even if there is a granulation tissue or a polyp, you give a pressure with a probe on a granulation tissue or a polyp, you can elicit the fistula. Uh, the reaction okay so how will you do the um, uh, how will you do the fistula test so using a pneumatic speculum sorry siegel speculum we will uh, intermittently uh, vary the pressure uh, in the middle ear you got to inform the patient that you are going to do a test which can potentially produce nausea giddiness or uh, Uh, giddiness or patient can fall down. To make the patient sit comfortably, uh, explain your procedure to the patient, and then do the patient. When you give alternate the the pressure, what will you look for? We will look for nystagmus uh, in the affected. Nystagmus so should putting towards the, the affected. Patient, yeah, for the patient, sir, how do you create this practice? Sir, uh, nystagmus beating. Fast components, the components towards the fast components towards the affected side. The fistula test only when the patient we do it on the affected side. Okay, when you press, it will deviate to the opposite side. When you when you relax the bulb, it will come to the same side. So when the patient develops uh, uh, only this diagnosis, that's great one. Nystagmus with the giddiness is great too. Nystagmus, giddiness, vomiting, and the patient collapses. That's great. Okay. What is false negative? Is that is. 
சார் தேர் வில் பி இன் ஃபிஸ்ட்லா இந் ஃபிஸ்ட்லஸ் கம்யூனிகேஷன் பட் ஃபிஸ்ட்லா டெஸ்ட் வில் பி நெகட்டிவ் இன் டெட் லேப்ரின் தட் கேன் பி எ ஃபால்ஸ் நெகட்டிவ் ஃபிஸ்ட்லா டெஸ்ட் அண்ட் தென் ஃபிஸ்ட்லா விச் இஸ் டைட்லி ப்ளாக்ட் பை ஏ கொலஸ்ட்ரால் ஆல்சோ கேன் ப்ரொடியூஸ் அ நெகட்டிவ் ஃபிஸ்ட்லா ரியாக்ஷன் ஏ வாட் இஸ் ஃபால்ஸ் பாசிட்டிவ் சார் இன் பியர்லி மீனியஸ் டிசீஸ் the saccule will be lying uh, just beneath the food plate of uh, stapes uh, so that uh, it will produce an nystag sometimes it will produce nystagmus during a uh, fistula test it is false positive okay uh, what are the condition what is any bird sign sir uh, alternating the uh, nystagmus while uh, alternating the pressure in the middle ear any bird sign is comes when the patient has got a uh, lax uh, annular ligament any bird sign is other sign of a false negative uh, false positive fistula test in case of a congenital syphilis the ligaments will be lax so in a case of a lax annular ligament there will be an hypermobile mobile foot plate that will cause um, when you do a fistula test patient develops uh, giddiness but uh, there is no actual fistula that's called false negative okay then why you alternate pressure uh, pressure is used because the but pressure difference the usually is was clinically normal so there is a there is a question uh, why that's uh, it why the um, Uh, alternate pressure is used for fistula test because the membranous labyrinth is inside the well protected bony shell when the shell is lost the middle pressure gradient is transmitted to the uh, uh, inner ear on the membranous labyrinth which causes the the stimulation of membranous labyrinth and giddiness that's why you want to check up the test you got to give a alternate pressure right uh, next continue கண்டினியூ சிவா ஹலோ normal and mobile in right side uh, rinny was positive in all frequencies uh, airborne conduction test was not reduced in the right side there were no tenderness in uh, there were no negative tra- tracheal tenderness negative three point tenderness and uh, negative fistula test bilateral facial now was see why you are not audible clearly normal at present Siva, the three points, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Anyone? Sir, he got locked out. Maybe he will be locked out. Okay. Yeah. the the three points are one is over the zimba conca second one is over the posterior border of the mastoid process third one is over the tip of the mastoid process zimba conca corresponds to the mckeven's triangle which is the uh, uh, mastoid uh, uh, mastoid antrum posterior border is for the mastoid emissary vein tip is for the mastoid tip that's the three points okay right so i have you back yes sir uh, sorry sir uh... yeah it's okay present tip is for mass on right side the preauricular on right side the preauricular area pinna postauricular area and eac was normal tympanic membrane was normal and 
இன்டாக்ட் அண்ட் மொபைல் இன் த ரைட் சைட் ஹலோ <laughs> Hello. ஹலோ சார் ஹலோ சாரி சார் அது நெட்ஒர்க் பைலட்ரலி இது ஃபேஷியல் நர்வஸ் கிளினிக்கலி நார்மல் சார் நோஸ் தெர் வாஸ் எனி நோ அப்நார்மல் ஃபைண்டிங் அண்ட் இன் த்ரோட் தெர் வாஸ் நோ எனி Uh, left sided chronic otitis media with the active squamosal disease with a mild conductive hearing loss without any complication okay um why do you say this is this squamosal disease because of the in, in history itself the patient had a scanty discharge with the greenish color that stage is gone that stage is gone on the examination on examination uh, there was a perforation in the attic region with the granulation tissue inside the attic and passing through the nose what is granulation tissue uh, fibrous fibrous tissues uh, with uh, neovascularized uh, neo, neo angiogenesis a reparative tissue with a fibroblast and a neo vascular uh, neo genesis of vascularization okay so what is that granulation tissue do to the body it will uh, cause uh, when you see a, around the when you see a uh, granulation what do you think underlying underlying inf- inflammation and it can erode the bone underlying there is uh, always an underlying osteitis okay how does colostoma erode bone sir by pressure necrosis hyperemic decalcification uh, vicarious blood supply enzymatic degradation okay uh see the 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 pressure necrosis is not the pressure is sufficient to cause the bone necrosis but this will cause the ingression of keratin inside the mucosa which will cause the uh, active inflammation in the uh, mucous membrane which will attract all the multinucleated giant cells and the uh, inflammatory inflammatory cells this produces increased blood supply to the local area whenever there is an increased blood supply on a bone the calcium will go from the high cal- high concentrated uh, uh, bone to the low concentrated blood 
so the bone will lose the calcium the bone contains three important structures one is calcium second is osteocytes third is the uh, matrix so the calcium moves out of the bone is called hyperemic decalcification other way called allostasis then there are a lot of multinucleated uh, giant cells these giant cells will form osteoblast as well as osteoclast but the osteoclastic activity will be more compared with that of the osteoblastic activity so it will eat away all the cells and lot of enzymes will be secreted these enzymes will cause the uh, the elastase protease and uh, collagenase enzymes will eat away the matrix so the matrix goes cells goes the calcium goes so bone become weak and it will go for necrosis what is the first bone which will get eroded in the cholestoma sir a lenticular process of uh, incus lenticular process it, incus is the first bone which will why it, uh, what is the let us apply for the lenticular process it's anastomote is between the branch from sylomacide artery and the uh, arteria nutrica in incudi incudomalioli okay. okay so which is the, the branch of sir uh, middle meningeal artery in between there is an artery there the tem superior temporal artery superior tympanic branch Okay. superior tympanic branch of the middle meningeal artery which comes inside the, the middle artery gives the uh, nutrient branch to the ossicles called arteria nutrica incudomalioli so this artery will come up to the level of the lenticular process so the lenticular process that supply comes from the anastomosis from the sylomacide artery which comes from the uh, 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 pyramid along the um, Uh, stapedius tendon and, and supplies the superstructure of stapes and along with that supplies the, the lenticular process. So these two arteries, anastomosis, is, is a long distance artery, it's got a very poor, poor blood supply, so chances for it to get necrosis is high. Okay, then um, uh, how does the, uh, where does this cholestoma start? In Prusak space, uh, usually in the, most commonly in the Prusak space. How does it spread? from prusak space uh, it enters the superior incudal space and uh, in lat lateral to the body of incus uh, it will go into the aditus and antrum okay then how it comes down uh, through the posterior pouch of walters it will enter the mesotympanum what is the posterior pouch of walters boundaries uh, Sir, uh, posterior malleolar fold posteriorly and uh, anteriorly by the remaining posterior part of tympanic membrane. Past tense, sir. Laterally, medially. Na pari na kasi. Laterally by the lateral, tympanic membrane. Laterally by the tympanic medially membrane. Medially by the medially by the posterior malleolar. Posterior fold. malleolar ligament. Okay, so in between the space is called posterior pouch of Walras, through which the cholestoma comes to the posterior mesial tympanum. Similarly, anteriorly through an anterior mesial tympanum, it uh, anterior to anterior pouch of Walras is comes to the anterior mesial tympanum. Okay, how does the posterior uh, how does the posterior superior uh, cholestoma spreads? The posterior superior cholestoma goes to the retro tympanum. And uh, it will enter into the sinus tympanae and facial recess. It can go down into the hypo tympanum. Uh, it can go in, into the uh, go medially into the promontory and enter the meso tympanum. And uh, through the isthmus tympanicus, it will enter into the aditus and antrum. Oh. Sir, from meso tympanum. Uh, isthmus tympanicus posticus it will enter into the superior incudal space and it will enter sorry, superior this goes into the inferior incudal space medial to the body of the incus okay if you see a cholestoma from the attic area goes into the antrum it goes usually lateral to the body of the incus if the posterior superior traction for the cholestoma if it doesn't erode the complete incus it goes to the antrum meets goes under the um uh medial to the uh, body of the sphincter so whenever you do an articotomy if you see only cholestoma if you see the only incus which is intact you should not leave and come out if you are managing a posterior superior traction cut with cholestoma you have to always remove that uh, incus to see the under surface to see any cholestoma goes under the the incus otherwise you might miss this okay how will you uh, without removing 
in, in fact, how will you uh, find out? Is there any way? So posterior tympanotomy. You are talking about attic. Medial to the uh, medial to the body of the incus. Through an uh, endoscopic. Endoscope, you, you look into what? Uh, we can nibble the head of malleus and uh, enter into the without removing mirrors, zinni mirrors. Uh... That is for the sinus tympanus. How does the uh, uh, ventilatory pathway of the uh, attic? What is the Sir, uh... ventilatory pathway of the attic? Anteriorly, uh, tensor tympani fold uh, will be there, sir. Okay. It you have the usually uh, anterior and instrument direct as posterior. Okay, you have a posterior pathway and an anterior pathway. Anterior pathway goes medial to the uh, and the malleus and it goes anteriorly, or uh, the posterior pathway goes along the isthmus tympanicus posticus. The tensor tympani folds uh, development entirely depends upon where the anterior epidemic uses arises from, which arises from the anterior pouch of the sacus medius, the, uh, the uh, fold will be complete. If it is from the uh, 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 pro-tympanum, it will be, be perforated. So all these things can be seen when you Look at that in those areas with the angled spokes from the uh, tympanic calves. So, elevated tympanic matter flap, you put an endoscope inside, you can see the medial surface of the, uh, uh, you can see the uh, ventilatory pathway, and if there's a so colostoma goes inside, it can be assessed. Okay, right then. What is this ventilation syndrome? Sir, uh, blockage of isthmus tympanicus posticus and uh, anticus will uh, totally cut off the ventilation to the attic region. Mm. Therefore, uh, retraction can occur and uh, cholesteatoma can... Uh, what is universal disventilation syndrome? What is segmental disventilation syndrome? Universal is... Uh, eustachian tube block is universal disventilation syndrome. Sir. See, for example, for your case, there's an attic problem. There's not much of a problem in the that means there should be some disventilation between the attic diaphragm and the mesotympanum. If there is a the attic, when there's only the posterior part of the mesotympanum is, is involved, uh, is posterior part of the mesotympanum alone is, is retracted, then there will be from the angle of the malleus, which is adherent to the, to the promontory, and there is an adhesion which will cut off the posterior mesotympanum from the pro tympanum, then you get the posterior mesotympanic disventilation syndrome. So, this is called segmental disventilation. If there's a whole East Asian tube is blocked, then you have a universal uh, attraction. Okay. So, usually these people will have a contracted uh, antrum and patient will have a sclerosed master. Okay. So, uh, what is uh, how much hearing loss is expected when the patient has got a... See, if this patient, it's an intact drum. Okay. This patient has got an intact drum. And there is an ossicular discontinuity. Ossicular discontinuity. Okay. Uh, and another patient who got a perforated drum with the same patient with an ossicular discontinuity. This patient will have a more conductive hearing loss. Perforated drum. When the ossicular is, ossicular is normal, uh, past tense of perforation will have a more hearing loss. Okay. Around five. If, uh, if, if, if the lenticular process is necrosis, the, the lenticular process is uh, uh, necrosed, intact drum or a perforated drum, which will have uh, more hearing loss. Intact drum patient will have more hearing loss. Intact drum patient will have more hearing loss. Okay. Why? Because of through the perforated drum. Through the perforated drum, the certain amount of uh, uh, sound waves can go and touch the, uh, the foot plate, which is prevented by the uh, intact drum. So, a perforated drum will have more hearing loss. What is bridging cholesterol? Uh, when, 
cholesterol bridge between the necrostatic fascicle and the tympanic membrane uh, the hearing loss will be less comparative sorry less uh, even though there is no ossicles the cholesterol will bridge between the tympanic membrane and the foot plate sir. when will you suspect a ossicular discontinuity or bridging cholestoma in a patient of a cholestoma with a conduct hearing loss sir uh, when uh, when there is conductive hearing loss with more than 60 decibel uh, hearing loss uh, there can be ossicular discontinuities less than that is which which amount of hearing loss minimum this amount of hearing loss you should think of ossicular uh, fixation or or discontinuity 60 decibel means there can't be a bridging cholestoma right but that's also is conduct hearing loss 25 decibels If there is more than 25 decibels of pure conduct hearing loss always should should look for there is some discontinuity in the ossicles okay right uh, this is about um, why this patient develops um, mixed hearing loss sir uh, in uh, cholesteatoma the back Yeah, with the secondary bacterial infection, the bacterial toxins can enter into the round window, uh, round window or oval window, and affect the outer vessels, which can cause uh, sensory neural hearing loss also, sir. So the patient can have a mixed hearing loss. Okay. So the more than twenty-five decibel of uh, conduct hearing loss in a case of a uh, uh, with CSOM with cholestoma, always you you check up whether the patient has got a. Uh, ossicular discontinuity okay right um so how will you proceed with this patient i would like to in- investigate and uh, treatment uh, first i will do a, a confirmation of the otoscopic finding with auto uh, endoscopy or auto microscopy rl okay. swab for pus culture sensitivity okay. uh, x-ray mastoids listen you do examination under anesthesia preferably general anesthesia or local anesthesia with the help of an endoscope or a or a microscope what all things you will do sir uh, if there is uh, we can we have to clean the discharge in the middle uh, sorry external uh, canal if there is any uh, we can okay. remove the granulation tissue uh, if we needed it can be taken for biopsy first thing you do is confirm your uh, in the uh, examination findings okay. then you take the pus from the middle ear to send for culture sensitive then you do the thorough washing washing of the ear is called what oral toileting what are the types of oral toileting so syringing uh, suction clearance dry mopping wet mopping suction clearance dry mopping is using that cotton wool You cotton tip uh, applicator, you remove the pus. Wet mopping is syringing. Suction clearance is what we told now. But uh, oral toileting is to remove the pus from the ear. The the pus can come from the external ear or or middle ear with an intact drum or a or a perforated drum. So wet mopping is usually for external canal with an intact drum. You can can remove all the secretions, pus, for example, keratosis abtrans, wax, or automycosis, or uh, other other discharges. You can do, but not for the perforated drum. For the the perforated drum, you prefer doing a dry mopping or suction clearance. Okay, so suck out all the pus. Once you remove the pus, you look for any granulation tissue, any free lying ossicle, very exposed to bones. note all these things okay uh, how important is it to do the culture sensitivity in this patient sir uh, for antibiotic coverage uh, in the pre op uh, in pre and the post operative period we can uh, the medical management has got no role in cholestoma unless the patient is uh, uh, in a specific situations right generally if the patient is ail and healthy see a cholestoma you operate and take it out okay so when you uh, the, so pus for culture sensitivity is for peri surgical antibiotic 
three operative, per operative, and four post operative. It's called a number lock cover. Only for that, your culture sensitivity is useful. Okay, but not otherwise. What is the algorithm which is expected in these patients? Sir, in a tick-and-trail disease, uh, pseudomonas, proteas, and E. coli can be that. These are all the, the common antibodies. You can give a... Uh, uh, Rarely you can get an anaerobic bacteria also. Okay. Um, then, uh, um, how will you, uh, what else you do? You have done an examination under, under the microscope. You have done a, the first for consciousness. First then, the X-ray mass sites. La last view, uh, HRCT temporal bone. What do you see on last view? Sir, uh, an tegment plate, sinus plate, if there is any mastoid cavity, uh, if, uh, cholesteatoma, if there is any cholesteatoma, cartoonal appearance can be there, sir. What is the uh, 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 differential diagnosis for cavity? Sir, uh, large anteral cell, okay. uh, cholesteatoma cavity, okay. post-surgical cavity. Okay. Uh, East Nofrin granuloma, tuberculosis, yes. uh, okay. malignancy of uh, temporal bone. Hello? Yeah. Hello, sir. Malignancy of temporal bone. Okay. Primary malignancy, secondary malignancy, uh, uh, glomus jugular, uh, even a million dot in six ton. All these things can erode bone and can produce cavity like lesions. Okay. Uh, then, uh, uh, what other investigations you do? So, HCT temporal bone. Okay. Uh, MRI. Uh, Diffusion restricted, uh, diffusion weighted MRI for uh, mass sites. Okay. Apro pre anesthetic mm -hmm. workup. Sir. MRI, how will you, you differentiate uh, cystic lesion from cholesterol? Sir, uh, diffusion restriction will be there in cholesterol. So you should, should do the uh, diffusion weighted uh, uh, images. Okay. So T1, T2 alone is not sufficient. If you do a diffusion weighted, you can do any small, small, small colostoma, finger leg projections. There is a limited digit. Which case, these are all very important. When you do a CT, MRI and all investigations, when you, you see the cholesterol, you take X-ray mass and you see a large cavity, uh, you go and operate or you will do this? For all cases, will you do that MRI, will you do a CT scan? Which cases do you do an MRI and a CT scan? Sir, whenever there is a small cholesterol or extensive cholesterol, we will do okay. HRCT and MRI scan. If okay. intracranial, suspected intracranial or uh, suspected any impending complications, we can uh, okay. do. Can okay. Okay. Then, too large a disease, too small a disease, you, you got to do. And if you are doing a recurrent disease, residual disease, then you got to do. And then, VAT patients. And then, the patient who are uh, prone to go for uh, 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 medical legal legal problems like chip in the shoulder type of patient don't come for the appointments on time and always fights with you and for those patients you got to take all these for a, for a precautionary reasons you got to take both ct scan and then and mri okay right um, then will you do an audiometry yes sir uh pure tone audiogram will uh, i will like to do sir to assess the quantity and quality of the hearing loss okay uh, so, which hearing loss you will do the uh, tympanoplasty? Which hearing loss you will not do the tympanoplasty? What are the pre requests for a tympanoplasty in these cases? Sir, uh, for a tympanoplasty, there should be preferably dry air. Okay. Uh, there should not be any cholesteatoma. 
you should remove all the cholesterol so that leave in with the with the cholesterol then good cochlear reserve normal eustachian tube function what is good cochlear reserve uh, bone conduction uh, hearing should be uh, that should not be no uh, loss more than 30 decibels is there is more than 35 decibels 40 decibel what will you do you do a canal wall up you remove complete removal of cholesterol hearing aid in paraplasty uh, or not sir uh, with canal wall up uh, we can do Uh, tympanoplasty and we can use hearing aid for that you person. say tympanoplasty you won't do it if there is a poorer than 30 db is it 40 db but to use hearing aid we, we should do tympanoplasty so what sir, for using hearing aid we should do tympanoplasty sir so the, the good cochlear reserve concept is gone Okay, so if the patient has got a poor hearing, more than thirty decibel sensitive to hearing loss. You augment the hearing with the, the tympanoplasty and keep a keep a hearing aid. Without tympanoplasty, you just close the hearing with perforation and giving a hearing aid. The augmentation will be much lesser compared with that of the doing a tympanoplasty and give a uh, hearing aid. Okay, so whenever you have a hearing loss, you augment it with the osteoplasty uh, uh, and then. If there is a still is not sufficient, you can go for a hearing aid. Okay, then <clears throat> okay, what will you do to the patient? For this patient, uh, I would like to do modified radical mastectomy. No, oh, fine. Yeah. What are all things you can do to the patient? Will you give any any conservative management? What is the conservative management you you give to this patient? Why when? Sir, uh, if the retraction pocket is uh, fully visible and uh, self cleansing, uh, we and the patient is willing for follow up, we can do uh, repeated uh, suction clearance of the retraction pocket alone. Why? Uh, because uh, the in this patient, uh, it's more likely the disease is uh, in the attic, uh, in confined to the attic and uh, lateral to the hand, uh, head of malleus. So. How do you know? So there is how do you know i don't i don't see any i see only a, a granulation tissue and then we are doing bone erosion of the end of the matrix was gone see the indications for medical management in a cholestoma is a patient who is unfit for surgery patient who is waiting for surgery patient who says okay and i I'll, i'll get it operated next month then you can't send the patient okay baba data and you can't send it you do a consistent medical management then the patient who is uh, not willing for surgery whatever you tell the patient is not willing you say okay if it's not willing get lost to can't tell that to the patient so you got to give something to the patient so that is the medical management then uh, as a, as you know the general condition of the patient is very poor a cardiac patient who got operated recently got a got a heart attack recently uh, uh, uncontrolled diabetes getting controlled or uh, renal disease these patients you got to give a conservative management what is the conservative management you got to give a suction clearance then first for culture sensitivity appropriate antibiotic you give a or uh, you give a, a local ear drops with the steroid and give lot of uh you a lot of uh, uh you got to follow up the patient repeatedly so that you monitor the patient this is progress okay so that is got to be done in the patient who are for waiting for surgery or patient who are not fit for surgery okay uh, what are all the, the surgery you want to do a modified radical mastectomy to do this patient is it Have you done a uh, audiogram to this patient? Yes, sir. What is the audiogram finding? Sir, uh, there was a mild conductive hearing loss, uh, about thirty-five decibels, and the airborne gap was uh, around twenty-five decibels, sir. The patient has got a sixteen decibel conductive hearing loss. What do you do? Only fifteen days. Like atticotomy and attic reconstruction alone. 
what is bond is mass selectivity attico and trust attico and attico and trust attico and trust and i proceed to do a attico and trust okay so you do a bond is mass selectivity you will not explore the middle ear cavity you remove only the attico antral part so that attico and trust is got a bond is surgery that is then for the patient who has got a near normal hearing or a for a normal hearing with an attic cholestoma okay so if there is a, a full blown cholestoma extending into the antrum and the middle ear cavity what will you do sir uh, i will do um, modify radical mastectomy for that patient what are all the incisions used for the ear disease sir william moyle uh, incision post oral incision post -oral, okay uh, lumper send oral incision okay okay We, I ask you for the for the ear disease. Okay, so only in particular thing, what incision you use? Rosen's incision. You get a the Rosen's. These are three incision: Rosen's endometrial incision, William Wells post auricular incision, and Lempert's end oral incision. Okay, so uh, then how do you you proceed doing a modified radical? Mastectomy. How do you identify mastoid angle? What is the surface marking? McKeven's triangle. How do you McKeven's triangle? Superiorly by uh, supramatal crest, anteriorly okay. by the posterior superior part of uh, external auditory canal. Okay. Meatus and uh, the tangential line drawn to the posterior superior wall, uh, which bisects the supramatal crest, forms the posterior limit of the McKeven's triangle. So, uh, superiorly posterior superior metal, uh, uh, anteriorly posterior superior metal wall, superiorly the temporal line or the supra metal crest, posteriorly a tangent from the posterior canal wall, which bisects the supra metal crest or a temporal line. It should bisect. So, that line makes the McEwen strength. Otherwise, that area is called fovea mastoid. Mastoid antrum is how deep from that area? 1.5 centimeters. 1.5 centimeters in the grona puddle. Okay, so uh, that is the that is the McEwen triangle. So how do you proceed with modified radical mastectomy? Sir, uh, William White's postural incision, periosteal flap elevation. Uh, identify the McEwen triangle and uh, I will start the bone work. After identifying the master antrum, I will accentuate all the accessible air cells. I uh, break the bridge. Uh, I will remove the bridge completely and reduce the ridge. What is the bridge? So that part of uh, that part of posterior superior metal wall lying lateral to the aditus. That part of the posterior superior metal wall which lies lateral to the aditus at antrum is called bridge. Bridge. What is ridge? That part of posterior metal wall lying lateral to the vertical part of facial nerve is uh, ridge. Called ridge. What is the anterior buttress? Uh, that part of superior meatal wall uh, lying posterior to the temporomandibular joint. All it goes in joints with the tegment. So that is the uh, uh, anterior buttress. Posterior buttresses? That part of super, uh, posterior meatal wall uh, which attached with the floor of the ESC. Oh, so floor of the external artery canal. Okay. So this is posterior buttress. So you remove the bridge, reduce the ridge to the level of facial canal. How do you know which is the level of the facial canal? Uh, sir, at the level of the lateral semicircular canal, the second genu will start and uh, in the upper part, uh, we can uh, remove up to the pyramidal process or the up. In the lower part, we can remove up to the digastric, uh, just medial to the digastric ridges. Uh, okay. So, uh, Superiorly, you 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 reduce it up to the level of the lateral semicircular canal, not up to the level of the uh, the pyramid. Pyramid lies medial to the, the facial canal. You go up to the, the level of the, the pyramid. You are bound to expose the uh, uh, facial canal. So up to the level of the uh, uh, 
பிரமை ஐ மீன் அப்போ தான் லெவல் ஆஃப் லேட்ரல் சென்ஸ் லேட்ரல் சென்ஸ் பேக்கனால் அண்ட் ரிடூஸ் இட் த டைகஸ்டிவ் கிவ் ஆன்டி ரெப்பண்ட் த டைகஸ்டிவ் கிவ் யூ will get the facial canal okay what is corner septum sir இது பீட்ரோஸ் பீட்ரோஸ் காமஸ் சூச்சர் லைன் பீட்ரோஸ் காமஸ் சூச்சர் லைன் இஸ் ஃபார்ம்ட் பை வாட் the peters part of i mean the the mastite air cell system is formed by two systems one is from the uh, squamous part of squamous part other one is from the peters part peters okay so these are all uh, one developed from the uh, sacus superior and uh, and other developed from the uh, posterior part of the, the sacus medius so both the things joins together and then they'll get uh, anastomosis easily if it the, the arteritic plate persist it's called corner septum it's called a petrous squamous suture line okay petrous persistent petrous squamous uh, uh, suture line so that's otherwise called a false bottom where you will uh, usually it seen that it was a very uh, exciting thing to show to the the post graduates when you are doing your uh, when i was uh, doing mastectomy those days but now with the advent of the uh, the cochlear implants corner septum is seen very often because uh, before it gets perforated at the age of uh, before two years we are doing doing mastectomy so the false bottom is very commonly seen these days so uh, that is when you when you drill you get a arteritic plate you think it's an antrum but you will not see the uh, 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 short process of intercept other things if you drill and uh, lateral sinus effect canal if you drill more you open up you see another air cell system so that's a persistent petrous squamous suture line that's called corner septum okay then uh, uh, you what is modified radical mastectomy it is a surgical procedure wherein the excentration of all accessible air cells eradication of disease and excision of the cholestatoma sac from middle ear aditus and antrum and exterior and making it into a single cavity by breaking the bridge and reducing the ridge and exteriorizing the cavity by wide posterior meatoplasty so uh, eradication of the cholestatoma from the middle ear cavity excision of the sac eradic uh, uh, elimination of the, the infection from the middle ear mastoid uh, attic and antrum uh, making the mastoid air cell system into a single cavity by removing the bridge reducing the ridge and amputating anterior and, uh, and posterior buttress and exteriorizing the cavity by doing a wide meatoplasty this is called modified radical in mastoidectomy what is the drawback of modified radical mastoidectomy sir uh, if the cavity problems can be there uh, like uh, the repeated accumulation of uh, wax uh, uh, repeated infections uh, normal anatomy is distorted sir so here if a patient needs any hearing aid uh, we cannot use it uh, also if uh, caloric stimulation can be there post operatively the patient can have caloric stimulation one is cavity problem second one is you can when the patient has got a sensory neural hearing loss you can't augment by giving an hearing aid third is reconstruction will be poor these are all the drawbacks of the cavities okay do your modified radical mastectomy what is the gold standard of what is the somebody asked a question one minute so mrm is the surgical procedure by which you eradicate the disease from the middle ear excise the sac completely elimination of the uh, cholestatoma from the middle uh, mastoid air cell system attic aditus antrum and the middle ear cavity by and uh, make this cavity make these parts into a single cavity by removing the bridge reducing the the ridge and amputating anterior and posterior buttress and exterior this cavity outside by doing a wide meatoplasty this is modified radical mastectomy okay so uh, we were talking about about something else so what is the other options of uh, because you can't do a, a good reconstruction you are completely destroying the normal anatomy what are all the other options we have sir canal wall procedures 
Catechol procedure is one. Canal wall reconstruction is one. And then you have a small Master cavity arm. mastectomy. It's like inside out uh, mastectomy. Okay. So oh, the one is inside out mastectomy and, uh, and canal wall obliterations. Okay. Now what we do is called an endoscopic colostomal uh, excision. Okay. Uh, so with this, uh, what are all the uh, indications for canal wall down mastectomy? Sir, uh, recurrent or residual disease. Okay. Uh, post uh, erosion of posterior meatal wall. More than one third erosion of the bony canal wall. Then you got to do. There is no point in uh, retaining the posterior canal wall. Then. Extensive. Preferably a preferably a single earring here. Complicated earring here. When you are not sure of complete excision of the colostomal sac. So all these conditions is always referred to a canal wall down. What are all the indications for canal wall up? What are the advantages of, of canal wall up? Uh, you can have a small uh, mastoid uh, cavity. Canal wall up. Normal. Normal external artery canal. Normal external artery canal can will be there, sir. Uh, there is no small. cavity, no cavity problem. Better hearing reconstruction can have a uh, better hearing aid. Cosmetically acceptable here. You do a wide metaplasty, you that is seen outside. Okay, uh, that can be avoided. Uh, when will you do a if the patient if the patient has got a dead ear? What are all the indications for radical method? What is radical mastectomy? Sir, uh, complete error, uh, obliteration of the Arbitration of the cavity by uh, plugging the eustachian tube and uh, removing the inlet. Okay. Removing the disease from the eustachian tube inner ear and mastoid cavity and making it into a single cavity and obliteration of uh, blinds are closer of that. Uh... Modified radical mastectomy. No, radical mastectomy. What is the, the difference? Sir, uh, we won't. Um, uh, we will close the eustachian tube and we won't uh, reconstruct the hearing mechanism. So there is no osteoplasty. Okay, remove all the all the diseased uh, this thing and then close the eustachian tube. You don't want the functioning ear, so you close the you plug the eustachian tube, remove all the osteocle, and then uh, if needed, close the blind shaft closure of the external artery canal. That is called radical mastectomy. What are the indications for radical mastectomy? Extensive cholesterol involving uh, east, east Asian tube. Cholesterol, in the cholesterol. In the cholesterol, what are the indications for radical mastectomy? Uh, extensive and aggressive cholesterol in uh, cholesterol involving the east Asian tube. East Asian tube to cholesterol, yes. Cholesterol yeah. involving the in Peter's apex and inner ear. Peter's apex, inner ear. Okay. First of all, involved inner ear. What is it called? A dead ear, cochlear promontory fistula, eustachian tube, uh, tube cholestoma. Then, secostrum. Uh, uh, secostrum of the uh, inner ear. All these things you do a radical mastectomy. Where you do a modified radical mastectomy. Remove the leaving behind foot plate, remove all the articles, clear the eustachian tube, plug the eustachian tube with what? Muscle. What? Muscle. muscle? Uh, I can use a temporalis muscle. Temporalis. Okay, take the muscle, plug it. Okay. Or you can do it with the fat or you can do it with, uh, uh, with soft tissues. Usually we use the muscle. Okay, then um, that is the radical mastectomy. Usually, that for cochlear promontory fistula or dead ear or eustachian tube colostoma or uh, secostrum of the inner ear. Okay, so how will you for uh, once you have uh, done the surgery, how will you reconstruct? Sir, for uh, post canal modified or... radical mastectomy, how will you reconstruct? Sir, we will do uh, 
miato plus g and m no the canal wall is down now you have only uh, the step is how will you do, do reconstruct sir we can do type 3 tim tympano plus c we can do type 3 tympano plus c if the step is also not okay step is not there total ossicular reconstruction process is or cartilage process uh, graft can be used cartilage you can plus c or you do a uh, short columnula still you don't do a long columnula not total ossicular reconstruction do a short columnula because your posterior canal wall is very low okay so you do a do a short columnula then you put a graft and then do a uh, metaplasty how do you uh, uh, how do you support the uh, metaplasty how would keep it patent so after uh, we will put a stent or a medicated gauze packs inside the cavity how long will you keep it for 14 days 14 days okay you just assess periodically till it get infected or uh, 12 to 14 days whichever it is a 10 to 14 days whichever it is earlier okay then then you take it out uh, then how will you when will you think that the discharge will stop sir uh, so what drugs will you after- give? give any ear drugs Will you give any antibiotic? No, sir. Don't give any. After complete epithelialization of the cavity, uh, the discharge will stop. Yes. I will give oral yeah. antibiotic coverage only. Give a uh, ear drops with steroid to control the infection and uh, uh, make the ear. better so 3 weeks to 3 months discharge is expected okay what are all the complications of metaplasty sir uh, wide metaplasty can uh, allow uh, infections into the middle ear sorry infection into the cavity you separate the clear from the uh, from the cavity by your your grafting with uh, the cavity the cavity based bama the epithelium cavity- that will not cause infection now we got infection get a fungal infection and bacteriotic that is uh, happens on axillary ear also when you do the when you remove the cartilage it patient can develop pericondritis okay so that's a very painful condition that you got to be very careful how will you manage the pericondritis we can do incision drainage and uh, compressive dressing Post operative patient incision, there is some surface patient who got to put a steroid and higher antibiotic and the culture director antibiotic. Okay, so uh, uh, if the patient wants a better hearing, so what surgery? Will you do? What are all the types of canal wall up procedures? Articotomy, cortical mastectomy. Uh, Combined approach to implantoplasty. What is combined approach to implantoplasty? Cortical mastectomy with the posterior tympanotomy and transcanal uh, tympanotomy. Anterior tympanotomy, posterior tympanotomy, cortical mastectomy. Cortical is called is called combined approach to implantoplasty. Okay, what is the intact bridge mastectomy? Articotomy. Intact bridge mastectomy. Sir, uh, the medial most part of the bridge is removed along with the antrum uh, and uh, excentration of antrum and atti- attic so that we can remove the disease from the attitus attic and antrum lateral only the medial most bridge. part of the bridge is retained yes so lateral part part is removed so that you maintain the, the posterior canal wall so you can you can reconstruct the middle ear cavity that's called intact bridge master okay so articotomy is a, a, a canal wall artico antrostomy if you don't reconstruct that's called a canal wall down if you if you, if you reconstruct that's that's canal wall up. okay what are all the ways of reconstructing posterior canal wall sir so using cartilage uh, bone grafts 
hydroxyapatite, proseline. You can cut the bone, take it out, and uh, keep the bone. You can take the cartilage from the septum bone, then you can uh, reconstruct. Or you can use the uh, dried uh, uh, bone dust to reconstruct. So, all are various methods of reconstruction. Posterior canal work. Okay, what is uh, so uh, which case you will open a pantrum, which case you don't open antrum? Sir, uh, posterior superior retraction pocket cases uh, we have, we must uh, open the antrum. Posterior superior retraction cases. What is flexible approach? What are the steps of flexible approach? Atticotomy. Uh, look for the cholesterol inside the attic. Uh, if there is any suspected uh, medial uh, spread of the cholesterol, we will do. Uh, we will remove the head no, of malleus and all all cholesterols or all masterectomies. You should have a flexible approach where. For everything, you do something or you don't do it. Okay. Uh, I mean, what I mean to say is, uh, one minute. So, um, flexible approaches. First, you put a post or implantation, then take the graft, then do a meta meta term. Then do a canal plasty, posterior canal plasty, anterior canal plasty. Next, six lateral canal then do a uh, conical thing so that your uh, reconstruction will be better. Then look at the tympanic membrane. Define whether it's a mucosal disease or a, or a squamous disease. If it's a, a squamous disease, do a uh, mastodotomy. Mastodotomy, if there's a mastoid, doesn't contain cholestoma. You do you, you don't do a cortical master, do a master dotomy. If you see a cholestoma, follow the cholestoma. If you don't see any cholestoma, do a atticotomy. Okay. Then do an atticotomy, then do a uh, uh, mesotympanic clearance. Decide whether you want to do a canal wall up or a or a canal wall down. So these are all the places you can you, you can define. If you see a uh, if you do a Meatotomy, when you see the huge cholesterol, then you do a uh, uh, go up to the tip, uh, sinodural angle, remove all the areas. If there is cholesterol, stop short of the up to the uh, uh, only up to the lateral semicircular canal, then you can plan uh, canal wall up. Okay, or you can, you can still do a small cavity. Uh, Mastectomy or posterior canal wall, wall mastectomy. So doing it segmentally, one by one by one by one. So you do a post-orchial incision, take the graft, meatotomy, uh, uh, canal plasty, first step design. Once you have decided, decided you are your first step, you don't see any any cholesterol, only a, a retraction packet, do a do a yeah, anticotomy, remove the posterior superior uh, uh, bony overhang. Look for uh, attic cholestoma and uh, a tympani cholestoma. You do see cholestoma, then you do a mere, uh, mastoidotomy. Then see whether there is cholestoma or not. If there is no cholestoma, go to that next step. If there is cholestoma, do accordingly. Then you do a uh, articulaplasty, reconstruction, and come out. That is called a flexible approach. Okay. Then uh, uh, so with you have done all these things, then uh, what is recidivism? Uh, recurrent or residual disease uh, cholesterol combined together called recidivism. Why is it called recidivism? Sir, uh, what is the meaning of recidivism? Come back. Uh, Tendency to fall back to his original behavior. So this term is borrowed from the social pathology. 
social pathology they uh, there are people who are called jailbirds they will do a small 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 mistakes get convicted go to the jail come out do the same mistake or same uh, similar type of mistake go to the jail and come back and they'll be keep recurring to the uh, repeatedly coming back to the jail so the same word was borrowed from the social pathology this is called recidivism that means residual uh, the tendency of the cholestoma to come back it can be a residual cholestoma or a recurrent cholestoma what are the causes of residual cholestoma uh, high facia residual uh, maybe pace sinus tympani for facial reasons we, we would have missed the, during the initial operation of cholestoma so residual cholestoma can be areas. a cholestoma which is left behind knowingly or unknowingly where are all you leave behind cholestoma knowingly where you are allowed to leave behind cholestoma uh, other than to uh, dura okay Uh, tightly adherent to uh, membranous labyrinth. Lot of places, which is keep depending upon the surgeon's comfort. Uh, intracrural cholestoma, cholestoma over the round window, wall window, days and patient. All these things, if you are competent enough, you can remove or you can you can leave. uh cholestoma which is allowed to form epithelial pearls are from the uh, cholestoma attached to the dura or the cholestoma attached to the labyrinth and fistula or over the foot plate of stapes you can if you are not confident you can just leave it in let it make an epithelial pearl and you can take it out easily after that okay that's called the cholestoma it is left behind knowingly what is that cholestoma you you leave it in unknowingly There are cholestoma in the hidden areas. What are the hidden areas? Sinus tympani, facial reasons. What are the boundaries of facial reasons? Laterally by cauda tympani, medially by the vertical part of facial nerve, superiorly by fossa incudus. So that's called antrum threshold angle, otherwise called facial reasons, which lies lateral to the vertical part of the facial nerve. Medially by the vertical part of facial nerve, laterally by the cauda tympani or tympanic angles, superiorly by the um, uh, fossa incudus. This was a very famous question some ten years back, but now after the advent of uh, cochlear implant surgeries, everybody knows what is posterior tympani. So what is sinus tympani? Sir, uh, space in the retro tympanum bounded uh, medially by uh, promontory, laterally by uh, vertical part of facial now superiorly by ponticulus and inferiorly by subiculum so there is a boat shaped space extending from the oval window to the round window medial to the uh, facial canal which is bound laterally by the facial canal medially at the upper part by the um, uh, foot plate of stapes and the, the oval window superior part is bound by the ponticulus inferior part by the subiculum and the uh, medially uh, intro medially by the round window so okay. that boat shaped area is called sinus tympani uh, it's a it's a real hidden area what are the types of sinus tympani uh, sir uh, beneath the retrofacial uh, medial to facial now beneath the facial now and retrofacial Okay, so whenever there is a uh, sinus tympani goes up to the uh, the facial nerve, that's called uh, medial to to facial nerve. Then it uh, that is called the uh, anterior to the to the facial nerve. It can go below the the facial nerve. That is type two. Retrofacial that's called type three. So retrofacial which uh, retrofacial uh, sinus tympani cholestoma will you remove? Type one and type two can be removed through the uh, visual tympanum using angled scopes, mirrors, or you adjust the patient or or go to the face as face end of the patient and you can you can remove it. But the type three the facial uh, type three sinus tympanum you got to to remove the uh, the colostoma by going from behind. You you remove all the retrofacial cells. Identify the uh, by the colostoma and try to remove the the colostoma. Okay, right. Uh, you you need to reroute the 
to patient law because you are not going to open up the uh, facial canal. So with an intact canal, you can you can remove the cholesterol. Okay, that is about the uh, where else you can leave behind cholesterol. Uh, other end to dural. No, no, that is what are all the hidden areas? A sinus tympani, anterior epitympani, anterior epitympani greases. Then uh, anterior to the digastric ridge, medial to the uh, digastric ridge, and then uh, the tracts which is taking the the cholesterol to the petal apex, like uh, retro labyrinthine, infra labyrinthine, supra labyrinthine pathways, and these cells where to which the the cholesterol can go. It is very very commonly seen in cellular mastite, particularly in children. Okay, so these are all called the Recurrent, I mean, uh, residual cholesterol. What is recurrent cholesterol? Sir, uh, recur after uh, surgery, uh, like okay. in a high facial ridge, uh, it can uh, have a uh, retraction again and uh, cholesterol can develop. So this can be be divided into a surgeon's factor or a, or a disease factor. Surgeon factors are who don't saturate the cavity. You leave behind sharp creases. Like a uh, retrofacial cells with the colostoma, cellular mastoid. You see the uh, the cells which is uh, not exenterated properly, left behind, or you can uh, leave high facial ridge, sinus tympani. Don't expose the anterior epidermal diseases. All these things you leave behind crevices. The the colostoma can recur. Okay. Second is the disease factor. Disease factor is a virulent disease, like a pediatric colostoma. Or a disease which uh, there are two types of cholestomas. It's called a uh, invasive cholestomas and the uh, uh, blunt cholestomas. The, the blunt cholestomas usually destroy all the cells and it makes the smooth cavity by itself. Usually, it is comes very often in the uh, uh, sclerosed mastite. So these cholestomas are easy to remove, but it's all it got a blunt edges. So that is easy to to remove and you won't leave these these cholestomas. Then there is an invasive cholestoma which which cut, usually occurs in the children, occurs in the cellular mastite, goes inside all these mastite air cells. So these cholestomas are very difficult to remove. Okay, so these cholestomas are called as invasive cholestomas, and these are all uh, uh, you can. Uh, <coughs> Okay, these are all invasive cholestomas, which you can, uh, very difficult to eradicate the disease. Sometimes you've got to accept the, the failure. Okay, right. Anything else what we have uh, uh, left out? So what do you think the, the patient's uh, uh, disease-free state? What is cavity problem? Sir, uh, repeated infections, accumulation of wax, uh, dizziness due to caloric uh, stimulations. What is Seagull's status? Deformity. Sir? What is Seagull's status? Seagull, uh, Seagull. These cavities, when the air goes inside, it, it, it produces a noise which is, looks like Seagull is shouting. No, Seagull's voice. That's called Seagull tinnitus. The noise occurs because of the air goes inside the um, uh, goes inside a cavity. That's called uh, Seagull tinnitus. Okay. What is uh, uh, chocolate cyst? Sir, uh, accumulation of wax cyst inside the accumulation of wax uh, inside the cavity. No, uh, the chocolate cysts, you get the, uh, like a cholesterol granuloma, you get the uh, uh, cystic lesions in the, in, in the cavity due to the uh, emirate in the, in the cavity. So that's called chocolate cyst. Uh, chocolate cyst. Okay. What is, uh, uh, what is the cause for failure in these patients? Single most important cause for failure. In a canal wall down, modified radical mastectomy. If you want to do a revision, what is the cause? 
Sir, uh, inadequate metoplastic. Inadequate metoplastic. How will you define uh, what is an adequate metoplastic? Sir, uh, the volume of uh, cavity should be adequate. Volume of air in the cavity should be adequately uh, adequately uh, ventilate the surface of the mastoid cavity. V S ratio. V S ratio. Volume versus surface ratio. So it should be one third. So the bigger the the surface, more should be the metaplasty, so that more air goes inside the cavity. Okay. If you don't do that, the patient will develop. Um, you can't see all that area, it won't get, get ventilated. Uh, what are the other causes of persistent discharge? Sir, uh, high facial ridge, repeated infections because of high facial ridge. Uh, uh, sump in the floor. Sump can occur at any place. And the sinus, sinus tympani, it can occur the, the sinus tympani, the anterior tympani, the tip, tip, uh, anything, okay. Recurrent colostoma, residual colostoma, repeated infection, cavity problem, then you get mucotherization of the cavity. What is mucotherization of the, the cavity? Sir, uh... Middle ear mucosa develops. Cavity, uh, cavity has got nothing to, to do with eustachian tube. Middle ear uh, mucosa anyway. growing grows into middle ear mucosa grows into the mastoid cavity and for, it is called as mucosation. You of don't the, put a graft properly, and you don't separate the, uh, the squamous epithelium from the thoracic ciliated the columnar. The the columnar epithelium will come inside the cavity. The characteristic feature of the galvanic epithelium or a cuboid epithelium is it contains goblet cells and it secretes. So you keep on getting the air discharge. This can happen in the uh, uh, tympanic membrane grafting also. So you get keep on getting the uh, uh, discharge. It's called a mucosization of the cavity. Okay. Asha? Sir. Janira? Yes, sir. Dr. Lakshmi here, sir. Hey, can we uh, close the session today? Uh, sure, sir. Yeah. Uh... Thank you, sir. Uh, so, sir has uh, got some emergency has just now left, it seems. So he requested okay, okay. me to give the closing remarks, sir. So uh, actually a very beautiful presentation by Subramanian. Uh, so on behalf of uh, Dr. Jantram, sir, I would like to thank uh, Professor Anthony, sir. Uh, for, uh, hey, Arsha, I am coming. Sir? I am coming. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We would be very uh, happy to have you, sir. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. And Teresa, it was a wonderful discussion taking us back to all those MS days. I haven't had an ear case discussion in quite a long time. So thank you. Yeah, welcome, welcome. I think actually it's your Subramaniam has uh, He's done uh, quite presented well. well. Yeah. But uh, nobody is such a good audience, such a big audience is not a joke. So I think he's done a quite a good job. So very well done, Dr. Subramanian. Congrats, congrats, Siva. But uh, you, the thing is, when we were doing our, uh, uh, for till recently, all the long cases would be larynx in the, uh, the MS. But now slowly the CA larynx and uh, CA hypopharynx is going out of the hands of ENT surgeons. Now everybody concentrates only on the ear. We used to tell, if you get a ear, you will fail. If you get a larynx, somehow you will pass. So whatever <laughs> answer you tell, it looks years. adequate. Whatever answer you tell, it looks adequate. But in here, whatever answer you tell, it is not adequate. I know, I know. The first question when I when I went there for a for a mock exam was, 
dimensions of whole window. I told some number. <laughs> they said, no, that is the dimension of a foot plate. I asked you dimension of whole window. So that, that family, they, Johnny Graham used to tell, even if you walk upside down in the ear, nobody will see you. Uh, only after the advent of endoscopic ear surgery, somebody will, will look at you and say he's doing something new. Otherwise, uh, ear has been uh, saturated. So it is very difficult to impress people with the ear. So, uh, but now we have, we have come to the ear in the, in the long cases. So you got to be careful. Most of the, the examiners will be well versed in the ear questions. So best wishes to the, all the exam going, going PGs. Uh, so with this, uh, we say, say good night to you all. So thank, thank you. you. And we'll see you next for the next case discussion. Sure, sure, sure. Bye. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.